<laughs> Hello, Shirley. Hi, Al uh, sorry, Alice. Hi, Alice. <laughs> Hello, Jackie. Hello, Shirley. Hello, Alice. <laughs> the frog. <laughs> you told you about the frog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, need to say hello to the frog as well. <laughs> I'm to, I've moved my microphone earlier. Which is oh, that's it. I've got these things keep popping up to saying what they're doing. All right, okay. Can you hear me? All right, because I moved the microphone a bit early, a bit closer. Right. I can hear you fine, Shirley. Hopefully, people can. I've just thought to put the computer on behind so that hopefully I'll see any comments if there's any comments. But that's a very old, very slow computer, so I won't hold out much hope on that. That's a judgment. I'll, I'll jump. I'll jump on my phone and I'll just mute it, and then if anything comes up, shall I, shall I tell you? Oh, great! Yeah, for? lovely. Yes. Okay. Right. I'm there That'd right be now. even better than waiting for this computer. Yeah. Got it. Oh, perfect. Okay. Welcome everyone, anyone that's listening to this today, anyone that's listening to it even later, because it hopefully, well, will stay on the page and it will also go onto my website. Um, but yeah, so we wanted to do a talk today um, and we all mutually agreed that it would be quite a good subject to talk about judgment. Um, and that was from a situation that I found myself in recently, um, in, in very many ways about judgment, um, being told that I would be judged uh, if I did something specifically. Um, uh, but then in a conversation as well with others, I found that there's so much around judgment. So we're not talking about judging um, what Morrison's stack their shelves like or, <laughs> you know, the everyday things that we do judge. I mean, we. I don't think you can say it's wrong to judge, you know, spiritual people. That's the thing that's underlying all this. People say to each other, we should not judge. Mm. So that's the big one to start with. We should not judge. What's your thoughts on that, Shirley? Well, that comes under the heading of passing judgment, doesn't it? Having our opinion on whatever. <clears throat> and, yeah, everyone is allowed their own opinion. But sometimes you need to keep it to yourself, you know, because we can't live somebody else's life. We don't know what's going on. So really, we should not pass judgment because we're not in their whoever shoes they happen to be. Um, I think regarding talking about somebody else and judging them, it comes under different, depends how you look at judgment. Is it appraisal? Is it assessing somebody? Is it evaluation? Um, is it according to your opinion, your own opinion? So it's different aspects to being judged and to judging others. We start judging when we're born because we judge whether the person that's leaning over us is one we can smile at or one we want to cry for. <laughs> um, so there's so many different ways of looking at judgment. Um, is it a professional judgment? Is it a business judgment? Is it a spiritual judgment? And I don't believe we should, I don't like the word should, that it's quite right to assess and judge somebody else's spiritual advancement. Because I always say they're walking their path and their path isn't the same as ours. So who are we to judge? Mm. You know, really, who are we to judge anybody? I don't think that we are able to judge anybody correctly. So don't do it. That's that's such a beautiful way of offering um, a very wise perspective, in my opinion, Shirley, which perhaps also is a judgment right there and then. But it's it's so beautiful to hear the the breakdown of how we can how it actually interweaves in every day, into everyday life. You know, are we offering a professional judgment? Are we offering a spiritual judgment? Are we offering appraisal? You know, yeah. where is it coming from? And um, and I don't know about you, Jackie, Shirley, but it's it's along the lines of what Shirley just said, you know, like we, we can't ever really judge someone because how can we when we don't really know as well? We're not walking their path. We're not walking their path. And it's kind of like, you know, that statement, uh, you know, that, that phrase where 
uh, you know, someone says someone, someone with great power or authority, if they walk into a room, it is known already. It, they don't need to speak it. They don't need to command it. It is already known. It's a vibration. I feel this way about judgment as well. You know, if we have to state, let's not judge, you know, it's, it's like a reminder to ourselves. There is a part of us trying to remind ourselves, hold on, where are we coming from here? Because like Shirley just said, we're born and taught to judge. That is Absolutely. a part of this well, world it, right now. Alice is second nature to us from mm. the time we're born. And yeah. that's the survival. I mean, if you were an animal or a native or whatever in the early days when you're growing, when you're learning, you have to judge to be safe, to know who you can approach, who you better. This is, this is not a negative judgment. This is a self-preservation judgment of just being alive. Mm -hmm. But you pass all that when you get past that stage. And then what we're talking about is judging people's behavior, aren't we? Mm -hmm. More than anything. So that's where we get, yeah, a lot of... Um conflict around our thinking when people say oh we should not judge or you should not judge um i thought straight away when you said about that shirley was at school when we're judged into what category we need to go in it has to be a on test on tests that they give us and yeah. some people are in such fear of tests that they're not going to do well anyway and then their whole school life is a judgment of and that they put upon themselves as well. We all do. I did. Yeah. You know, or the majority, I won't say everyone, of course, I don't know that every, and that's a judgment. But, you know, that is where, and like you say, everything in life really is Brings around a judgment. A judgment. <clears throat> Just call it assessment. I mean, a doctor, when he looks you over for whatever remedy he's going to give, they, we could say it's judgment, but in his judgment or her judgment, they will prescribe a certain treatment, but they have to assess. I prefer the word assess than judgment. And but in their judgment, this is the right remedy. Do you see? So it's that blooming word again. We could change the word. Um, I never can, oh, sorry, you can make good decisions. I mean, I have to judge whether I want to go on Zoom or not. Yes. What's more important to me, getting on with what other things I'm doing or going, I have to make that assessment, that judgment, that decision. They all come under the same word. We just get them mixed up a bit. Don't you agree, Alice? I do. I, I do agree to a, to a certain point where like, we, we have to be able to break down what it is that we're doing and where it's coming from, right? Because like, for judgment in the conventional sense it, it really comes from an ego perspective in, in, that, in the conventional sense. But what you're talking about, Shirley, as well, when you're starting to use these different words, is like you, we bring in discernment. You know, we're bringing in an assessment, like you say. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, discernment comes from the heart, right? It comes from the heart. What's in highest good? Because when we are, to use that word judgment, when we're judging with compassion, you're, you're starting to discern now what's in highest good for all concerned. Right? It's, a, it's a level of connection that can only be achieved through the heart, but where most of us are calling ourselves out on right now is the ingrained um, judgment that we have based on how we were raised, how we were taught to uh, export our energy, how we were taught to um, outwardly focus it rather than knowing ourselves to listen to another's truth. And if I may just jump to the comments here as well, we have some wonderful people joining us live and um, oh, we have, yes, we have 14 people on with us right now. <clears throat> and we have Linda, uh, Linda Tully and Thelma uh, and Lisa saying hello here. And Thelma just put a really interesting comment, I think, Shirley, uh, in, uh, in validation to what you were saying about, you know, when someone is um, like at school making a judgment, when we're learning things. And it's interesting because Thelma put, it could also be a manipulated, uh, a manipulated behavior because how society is currently formed, we've all, I think all three of us have gone through a schooling system where we took tests, right? Exams yes. and things like that. And instead of, instead of listening to our inner guidance, instead of listening to where the answer truly comes from for all questions, 
we're being told to mirror and copy and get reprimanded if we don't repeat that same answer. Mm-hmm. You know, this is a big thing right now and can lead to a to really interesting portrayal of judgment, even though it's quite hidden within our own fields. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah, and, do you and think? Uh, just existing, uh, especially as you get older. Mm. I don't mean old, but I mean mature, adult. We go on intuition. Mm-hmm. And if we trust our instincts, our intuition, you can call it judgment, if you like, but I prefer a different word. Mm-hmm. You see, it's the same thing. We are judging in a way, mm-hmm. but it's not incriminating or passing judgment. It's going on the feelings. Mm-hmm. So we call that intuition, but it's still a judgment to act on those intuitions or ignore them. So what you're this saying is, is that it's... This yeah. is just a play on words, quite honestly. Judgment can mean so many things. Um, it's like in someone's judgment, what you feel and think might be quite different to somebody else. It doesn't mean one is better or right, more right than the other one. It's just a play on words, I think. And if Semantics somebody, are a big thing in this world, hey? <laughs> it's a big thing, yes. Um, judgment could be expressing an opinion. And when you express an opinion, that is, in a way, having a judgment on something. Or someone, mm-hmm. isn't it? And that is passing a judgment. You know, the whole thing gets all twisted up. Uh, it, it, it's very simple for me, actually, because I go totally on my feelings, my intuition, and I don't even think of it as a judgment. Because if I see somebody not behaving or acting or saying the right thing or whatever, I just think, oh, they are simply walking their path, mm. their path. You know, they either know better or they don't know better, but it doesn't matter. It's mm. their path, not mine. Right? And how I receive it is my responsibility. Nobody else's. So I don't even think of it as judgment. That's more about acceptance then, Shirley. That's the big thing. Acceptance is so important, isn't it? Just accepting how you are, how others are. You know, if you've got a level of acceptance about life, you you know, you won't... Accepting other people to be who they are. Exactly. ...in their journey without passing judgments on what they're doing or saying. Uh, that's that would be passing judgment if I was thinking about what they're doing wrong or what not wrong or how it hurts me or whether that's passing judgment. Mm-hmm. I just say they're just living their path. That's all. They're just walking their path. I mean, on that poster. Oh, sorry, Alice. No, I'll just say that please. on the poster it said um, about love. Um, it, by judging others is not really judging others. It's more judgment of yourself for the person that's judging. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. you could feel... Um, because you could recognize... Oh, it's good. Mm. There's Sorry. Always you could... ident- There's always an identification process that happens with the action taken upon a judgment. Right. So there's always an identification, whether that's a positive identification or whether that's something that feels uncomfortable. Mm. You know, there's always that identification if we act on it. I think, Shirley, what you said was just so beautiful because you were you were saying that's their path. And what a brilliant and perfect way to stay on your path Mm. as well, by even stating that, by even thinking that, by even feeling that, you know, that's them on their path. You know, you've just you've just literally gone blessings to you and in so doing you bless yourself Mm. right as within so without and it's when we act from the feeling of uncomfortableness from that form of judgment that I think is causing a lot of ripples right now Mm -hmm. um and really it's it's those ripples that are calling us all home you know calling us all home back to like you said walking our own path being in our own heart you know, finding that identification. And like you said, Jackie, with that phrase, when you judge another, you're actually judging that part of yourself. You know, finding that part and welcoming that shadow home, 
welcoming that back in. We've got some wonderful comments and hellos. We've got Emma saying hello, Linda saying hello, um, Penny and Fran, they're all saying hello as well in the comments. <clears throat> but you Thank know, you. I've, I've found it's very um, mind opening for me when I find myself thinking uh, a judgment, I mm. not actually acting on it, acting. but it's one that arises, you know, without you thinking about it in advance. And there's a part of me that can recognize myself there. And I more to say, whoops, that is me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it takes you unawares. And it, oh gosh, I'm like that. <laughs> That's brilliant. Penny is Penny's here and she's saying incriminating passing judgment and unsolicited advice that has not been asked for is different to making life appraisals and judgments. Yeah, she's right. Incri mm -hmm. I mean, that's the thing. If you're on the end of a judgment, you know, it's like when you get 99 uh, compliments and one mm -hmm. judgment. What do you think of? Because we don't want to. Ideally, you don't want to be judged. No. It always kind of triggers that inner child as well within us. Uh -huh. right? Because just in this world, right? And Jackie, you know, you 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 work with us all day in, day out with Ho'oponopono and inner child, right? Exactly. And, and and in this world that we're currently focused in, right? The the environment and cultural upbringing that we've had has been based on shaming. Shaming breeds negative judgment right and there's always that part of us within when like you say Jackie if you get 100 comments 99 are just wonderful and one is a little bit pokey you know we look at that and we go oh, you know and that's our inner child responding yeah you know, they're, the, they're the wounds that want to come forward and when Shirley I love what you said when, when you're like oh but part of me when I'm thinking mm, about you know this whomever or whatever and there's a judgment you go oh that's there within me as well I, that's you said it earlier when the maturity level that's quite a profound place to be in really you know to be able to look in that mirror back as well and just go huh oh, who knew that was there I think I've reached the age where I can do that which I couldn't have done that when I was younger <laughs> I think <laughs> many many struggle with it uh -huh. but going back it's to a learn the business judgment uh, this mm -hmm. isn't so easy is it because you if you trust the people you're doing business with, then when they fail you or whatever, that's a big shock. And you then question your judgment in allowing it to proceed as far as it went. Where do you go with that? I don't know, because that is a different sort of judgment, a business judgment. I mean, I trust business deals. If I've got one, I trust them because I... You have to go earlier and trust the person initially. But then mm -hmm. if it's a company that you don't meet people face to face, how do you find the, enough judgment in you to do to get the right involvement? I don't know the answer. Mm. That's a really beautiful and very poignant question for this day and age. And if you don't mind, Jackie, if, uh, if I may speak a little on this, just from what's coming in right now is that when it's something to do with business as well, you've got a couple of aspects. You have the clients that are gonna benefit from whatever the collaboration is, whatever business venture you're going in, whomever is gonna be on the receptive end, right? So the, whatever is being offered, whatever product or collaboration, is it meeting the highest good for what it was intended, mm. right? You know, and... <clears throat> Yeah, it, it is tricky with that, especially like you say, if you're working with a business and you've not met any people, mm. you know, there's, there's almost a certain amount of um, research that could have to be done or intuition that you're relying on. But then, as we know, intuition is going to shift and change as the timeline starts to embody, mm. as it starts to become material and physical. And if it's physicalizing is that a word if not making it a word if it's if it's becoming real and physical not how yeah it should be then we have to be able to make those shifts and changes as well 
but right? you know, without feeling the guilt we're always going to make mistakes i mean i've oh, made them sure. financial levels big mistakes huge mistakes but they haven't been mistakes because they've taught me exactly you see so this really wasn't that bad you get through it you get <laughs> over it and you move on so even making wrong judgments, which I've done, I mean, I've sold a house when I shouldn't have sold it. I've done this, that and the other. All the business financial things, I seem to make more mistakes than any of the other kind. But it's still OK, you know, mm -hmm. which I can't understand how it can still be OK because it should have been much better. But it hasn't damaged me. No, it's built you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think we, what I'm really pointing out is none of us are going to make life easy and do the right thing all the time when it comes to business and finance and practical stuff. We're going mm. to make mistakes. I mean, that's how you learn. It is. Painful, but it's how you learn to do it again. Mm. And money is so, it, it's the most charged energy field in this whole existence, we've charged it with so much emotion in all of our traumas. Yeah. There is, I, I don't know personally anyone that doesn't have emotional trauma somewhere connected to money because it's ingrained, we've blamed it and we've um, put it as an overlay for you know interpersonal relationships, uh, humiliation experiences, uh, shamings and self uh, judgments and guilts. And so it's, it's always gonna be one of those um, areas I feel um, that will offer the most opportunity for growth experience, you know, yeah. through the contrast, through the challenges, through the, you yeah. know, lessons that we get to learn. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's the beauty of it. It will always be okay because there's always something bigger and better and something more aligned. After that, we just needed to have the in-our-faceness, you know, that in-our-face, oh, to be able to go, I'm more certain about doing it this way now. Um, and we are here to have these experiences anyway. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, without them, what's what's it all about? We need to have the experiences, basically. <laughs> exactly. We had a conversation the other day. Who was that with? Um, oh, when I was with Tony and Annie Mills uh, a couple of weeks ago, and... And you know, Diana Cooper has said for the longest time that 2032 is the golden era. You know, we're moving towards a golden era. It'd be before that, but you know, she's always maintained that it would be that. And I said, well, what will the golden era look like? Um, because the way you, you sort of think about it is it's gonna be heaven on earth and we're gonna be in love, peace and harmony all the time. So what will push us forward if we're just in love, peace and harmony all the time? No. I'd it's still going to be. <laughs> Say that again. Challenges. I'd be bored. <laughs> what would I push us forward if, there, if it was just love, peace and harmony? I don't know. I feel like we'd still have the experiences of, um, of challenge and obstacles and contrast, but we'd have a different response to it. Yeah. Whereas like the majority of the world, and I, I, I don't know that, you know, you two lovely ladies here would do it this way, um, but the majority of the world have a very emotional, a very personal response to a challenge, which kind of catapults them into this, uh, this spiral, you know? I think when we get to that stage of peace, love and harmony, it's the peace, love and harmony within. Our emotions mm -hmm. aren't needing to be as big because we've harmonized our energies within. So when we come across the obstacle, the challenge or the disagreement even, we can just go, ah, we're coming from our heart in harmony and peace and love. Well, that's interesting. What would be of highest good here? What would be the highest path? It wouldn't be boring, but it'd be a different, uh, less charged way of experience in my opinion mm. anyway you know what do you think Shelley would you get bored <laughs> would you still get bored <laughs> no I, I'm just listening to you oh, thank you <laughs> challenges are going to come out of the blue anyway I mean you know I'm with... oh, new opportunities are going to come up all the time that's mm. what being alive is 
Mm. Absolutely. Um, when we were at the retreat yesterday, there was a big event at the retreat. And Matt Bell, I was listening to his talk, um, and he said about the television. So they very much want us to all have a television because if you're watching the television, you're either living in the past by watching something from the past or they're doing something futuristic, but they're always distracting us from what is the now moment, this now moment and going within. Um, I, you know, I was asked a question the other day, could I sit and look at a rose for one hour? How many people could sit and look at a rose for one hour? No. What our minds are like, it's so distracted, but you actually mingle after the hour, you mingle it or before the hour's up, mingle with the rose that you become part of the rose. Not that that's, but that is a thought, you know, if you were just with a rose for one hour. But what he was really getting the point of was being within yourself because that's where the power is but the distraction of life all around us you know how they love tiktok now because it's a very short clip because the focus is so short now so you know if we can focus on ourselves and come back to ourselves like you say the answer is always within i don't know where you have you tried it far around that have you tried it staring at a doing the rose for one hour yeah. Yes, yeah, oh. and you do literally mingle with the, but it's a very stressful thing to start with because you can't believe you're giving that amount of time to to that. So your mind is going 100 miles an hour is why would you give time for this? But you know there's a reason for it. It's interesting, isn't it? Because when, when I run my groups, and I, especially for beginners, the first meditation I give them is one minute sometimes half a minute and this is time and the amount of things they get in one minute it's like they've been there for two hours in their experiences but they've only actually time-wise been there for one minute so that's the other direction isn't it this is quite interesting time is always a really interesting uh, topic um yeah, there's many streams of thought on that. And I love what both of you are saying there because within that, within that 60 seconds, within that one minute, you know, there is really a lifetime in there. If you're in the right place, be operate on a clock, you know, it's being downloaded in an instant in a jiffy, right? But then at the same time to be able to sit still with anything, whether that's a rose, whether that's yourself, whether that's an animal, whether that's, I remember I was in France in May and I sat probably for around that time. And I was just sat in some, uh, I was up on a hill and there was some ruins, uh, a very peaceful land. Uh, and I was connecting with the elementals there. And I was just watching this colony of ants for a good length of time. And by the end of just kind of observing, not, not consciously kind of going, what are they doing? But I was just there just breathing and just being and, and feeling but by the end of it the ants had such beautiful messages that they wanted to offer and it just it reminded me and I wonder whether this happened with you Jackie with the rose it reminded me that the medicine the frequency that all of the beings have to offer as well when we sit you know without a, an agenda yeah. right and this is an important bit without an agenda we get to observe and be privy to some of the most sacred things in the world and that's another being sharing their frequency, their truth. And when we're in judgment, just to bring it back a little bit to this topic, we're not in that space at all. Because when there is the negative form of judgment, there is an agenda associated with it. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yeah, there's no judgment, no. Right. No, there's no judgment. I don't find there's ever any judgment from any angle when you sit and meditate. Exactly. It's just not there, you know. Oh, no. No, no, that's it isn't there. Yeah, um, Penny's put in love, peace, and harmony. We will lead by the heart and not the ego. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Penny. Yeah, she's lovely as Penny. 
Penny, Penny Paul. Yeah, no problem. I'm going to read some of these judgment, um, if that's okay. I'd like to read some of these quotes out that I read earlier. Um, so through judgment, we separate. Through understanding, we grow. Mm. What does it mean to hold space for someone else? It means that they are willing to walk alongside another person in whatever journey they are without judging, without judging them, making them feel inadequate or trying to fix them or trying to impact an outcome, but to listen. That's a big one for right now. Holding space. Holding space and, ha and listening. Thing. You don't have to give advice. No. It's just to be a you don't right yeah absolutely oftentimes that's our spiritual ego going oh i know the answer to this i have a thought about this no no let me, hey, let me fix you what you know i, I did a counseling course once uh, oh way back when i was 54 and you know the hardest thing in that class mm. was not to say anything mm -hmm. just keep your mouth shut and let people speak and that was hard it's, it's really harder than you think because you you want to give advice you want to say what about this and what about that and you have to keep quiet and not say a word God. has anybody ever tried that people don't believe that i can ever keep quiet so they don't <laughs> when they hear it. <laughs> oh gosh it's but it's no true, that's it's interesting mm. It, mm. it's very hard because you you're moving your own ego out of the way in order to let the the being experiencing whatever they're experiencing to let them process and this is the thing this this is them doing alchemy as well just like when we have an emotional response that's alchemy yeah. if it's if it's held like if you're witnessing someone alchemizing through emotional through verbalization that's an honor it's a sacred privilege to be able to hold the space in trust for them to feel safe enough as well for that to come out so that they can discover rather than doing what we've once again taught ourselves to do a lifetime and take someone else's response and out like that journey of self-realization they hear that they hear things through speaking for that length of time like in a counseling session right you know they hear things that they would never have heard had someone not been holding that space for them because they would never have stood there talking it through in the mirror yeah. they mm -hmm. needed someone to hold that space and to not say anything just listen and breathe with a heart open yeah i believe fully that you would have done that easy peasy Shirley. you know I, I think alice we already know all of that really but it's putting it into practice isn't it always getting ourselves out of it yeah knowing it and doing are not always the same thing <laughs> very true <laughs> in this disembodied world <laughs> emma is saying the ego loves judgment which it absolutely does. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's attention. Um, yeah. Judgment's attention. I, I'll, I'll just read a couple more of these. When we hold space for other people, we open our hearts, offer unconditional support, and let go of judgment and control. And that's by Heather Platt. She wrote that one. When someone judges you, it isn't actually about you. It says more about their own insecurities limitations and needs mm -hmm. there's loads of these actually but <laughs> i mean they are so relevant we don't judge others when we feel good about ourselves mm -hmm. you see it differently though don't you like when you feel good about yourselves you don't see the thing that others would judge you don't see it it doesn't show up for you mm -hmm. you, know? exactly. you see something else you see a different facet of that gem you know dalai lama love is the absence of judgment mm -hmm. and that's where emma says about the ego loves judgment it's unconditional. love is the absence yeah yeah love doesn't have real to... magic oh sorry sorry in general life especially with families love doesn't have to mean like because you can love somebody but not like them. I mean, this is true in a lot of families, isn't it? 
you love all your kids. That's a, you die for them. You love them to bits. You don't always like them for what they do and how they behave. Do you see? The two don't always mix. They mm. run on side sometimes. Interesting. It's an interesting thought to ponder. Because what Isn't I would wonder it? as well, and I'd love your thoughts on this as well, Shari, to continue on, but like, what is it the being that we're disliking all the actions, the results of how they're feeling? Yeah. Because those actions are a result, right, of them not being in alignment, them judging themselves, them feeling less than. So is it that we don't like them or is it that we know that they deserve better? Yeah. Or we're struggling to watch that, watch them go through what they're going through and project it out. Unfortunately, we're not all psychiatrists, are we? We don't all <laughs> see the way it should be. <laughs> <laughs> no true the next okay, maybe we need to spend more time meditating with roses <laughs> maybe that's good yeah. <laughs> it yeah. says the real magic in relationships means an absence of judgment of others real magic in relationships means an absence of judgment of others um, people who matter won't judge you and people who judge you don't matter. That was just a... People who matter will not judge you. And people who judge you don't matter. I think that's a bit... But that's of a, a big one. That's, I think that's a bit of a, in my opinion only, a bit of a dangerous statement to make. Because as long as we have inner child wounds, we will judge. It's part of being... It's, it's, yeah. Judging is we, part because then we get yeah then we get into cancel culture that person had a reaction to what I said or did when I was needing to alchemize when I was in a process they reacted to me that means they judged me I'm now going to cancel them out of my life even though we've got a really strong foundation yeah. or we could have a conversation go hey I need to know what you were feeling when you said that because that really hurt me and I know that's never your intention because I know you you know I know you throughout lifetime or for this length of time so can we talk about this in a when we're not emotionally high you know emotionally charged and there's lots of different ways that are starting to emerge with how we can communicate around when there is judgment or anything present like that you know yeah, a lot Absolutely. of judgment is how it affects is totally on what they're judging you for because the different judgments I mean it might be like somebody not making the cup of tea correctly which is nothing but it's still a judgment you know um so it does depend on the nature of what they're, they're judging uh, and I think that's quite important to remember so I think we have to judge to a certain degree depending on on the subject matter because it, Alma's saying, what about judges in the system, criminal system? What about judges exactly. in the criminal system? That's the word comes from. Mm. Judgment, judges. It, it, it actually originated with the judges mm. in a passing sentence or whatever. Oh, Forming yeah. opinion and assessing. Whenever we have a word with meant at the end, that's about mind mind control government judgment you know these are all about um you know mind processes mental processes and when we're in a space where we haven't yet fully taken accountability for all of our energy which we're still remembering we're still learning every single one of us is still learning this right then we're still going to have systems like that if you choose to uh, subscribe to them that's also that's something that only you can decide as well, because that system actually only operates based on the volition of the people, based on the, the, the want of someone else to have that accountability, you know, instead. Yeah. So it's, there's always a time and a place and a purpose in the world that we're in, but also that particular legal system actually is only relevant for that aspect of law. There are many layers of law which aren't exactly. spoken about. It's all aspects and focus, and mm. there's so many nuances to the word itself, judgment. So many ways you can interpret it. Mm -hmm. 
And if I, may I offer something here, and I, I wonder how you two will resonate with this, but when we're finding ourselves a little bit charged with uh, a group of people, like for example, I see the comments here, uh, like a government, you know, or a group, a body of people <clears throat> making decisions on behalf of others, seemingly. When we feel charged by that, there is a part of ourselves that is identifying and believing that they actually have that power over us, whether that's conscious or not. There is a part of us that believe that. Now, if we want to bring that into a balanced place, if we want to heal that and release that uh, frustration, fear, or worry, concern, whatever it may be, judgment even, then we have to find those parts of ourself that are hidden. Mm. We have to find those parts of ourselves that wish that we had that power because they will be there if there is a charge big enough, if there is a, an emotional charge big enough, then there is a part of us hidden that we don't see that wishes it has that power as well. So we have, like everyone's been saying in the chat, compassion and open-hearted love. We have to find that way to find unity within ourselves to neutralize it without everything starts within her before it mirrors back without you know i don't know what do you lovely think? yeah and you need to go on your intuition as well mm. the, the feeling and the energy and the vibration it all comes in you know to it mm. um I know, I know some very very beautiful people who they're it's not even judgment. I don't like the word judgment. I like the word discernment or or understanding or whatever, anything but the word judgment. And they assess or connect or otherwise according to the energetic vibration of that individual situation. Even a situation, there's a vibration, that an intuition, if you like, that you pick up that causes you to act one way or the other. Do you call that judgment? No, I call it common sense. <laughs> Have you ever been called for jury service, Shirley? No, never. No. Oh, no, 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 or have I, luckily. Have you, Alice? It's because no. I've been out of the They wouldn't know where to find me anyway, to be fair. <laughs> oh, fair enough. I don't think they know I exist. <laughs> oh, good. So that is the best way. I'm past the age now where they would do it. So oh, really? My dad, on the other hand, has been called like three times. <laughs> really? Wow. <laughs> I mean, what a position to be put in. I, hmm. um, I've got another one here. Um, every time you judge someone, you reveal a part of you that needs healing. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. On some it, level. You know. Depends what they're judging them for. If they're judging them for eating with a knife and fork the wrong way around, that's that can't be, can it? <laughs> I don't know. Do you not think? But like, you, I think that is still judgment because we've been taught a certain way. We've been taught an etiquette. That right? doesn't reveal, I'm sure, what is going on inside you. The fact that you handle because I'm left-handed, you see. Mm -hmm. So whenever I sit down to a meal, if I'm out, I have to reverse the cutlery. Do you? Oh yeah, I, I literally. I'm totally and absolutely left-handed and right-brained in every single thing. I even Ooh. swim left-handed. But where did that come from, though? So this, this, is, this is where, like, my curiosity oh. takes me here. Because I, I do agree with what Jackie said, where every time we judge, and it, even if it's something that seems like minutia, that seems so kind of small, it can't possibly be a judgment. But I actually, you know, I think it could be. Because when did we feel like we needed to swap our hands like were we getting shamed for it were we getting punished for it were we getting you know a slip on the backside for you know for eating with the wrong hands like uh well, i was born that way you know it's yeah. totally to do with my brain um completely because even at school nobody punished me i had a good childhood i couldn't oh, so over the rope the way everybody else did it had to be the other way around oh so you so you switch it to be left-handed in a restaurant I'm totally and absolutely oh. every single thing left-handed or left, you know, right-brained. Oh, can't. sorry, I misunderstood. I thought you meant that you switch it, you switch your hands and become right-handed to it. I misunderstood. No, that. no, 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 because the yeah. table's laid, and because yeah. I have to have it, I have to. <laughs> if I'm going to eat, 
<laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. I even knit left-handed. You know, everything I do is opposite. But that wasn't through uh, um, punishment or anything like that. I mean, you know, I know that's just a that's just, just a, was, just is biological. Yeah. Just as it is. Yeah. yeah. Emma's mm. saying a lot of judgment comes from the programming of our parents. And mm. that was from the programming of their parents. And mm. that was from the programming of their parents. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, that can be true with a lot of people, but it certainly wasn't with mine. My mum let us do just what we wanted. We felt we brought her up the other way around. <laughs> it's really quite Amazing. Common. And Polly saying judgment is a gauge, it's a measuring tool. Well, that's judgment is a gauge, it's a measuring tool. Hmm. Mm, not sure I understand that. Measuring against think, what would be my question. Yeah, I'd be curious to see what Polly puts in there, but what I think, what I feel intuitively that is being said there I think it kind of links back a little bit Shirley to when we were talking about uh the business and Jackie when we were talking about like business uh judgment you know uh on a scale there you know but I'm not sure I'd love to I'd love to see what Polly puts in the comments as well but the only time that I've seen it used as a scale or a, a gauge of measuring tool is is in a system based on a hierarchical grading system you know so like schooling and exams and uh competence and you know, things like that. There is a judgment and a category, A, B, C, D type of thing. But I, I wonder if uh, everything's in relation to something. And, you know, sometimes when we see something, which you might call a judgment, if, you know, whatever the thing was, sometimes it's simply an observation mm. that if something's different, that doesn't make it a judgment. It's an observation. Mm -hmm. That's all. Simple, you know. That's so much nicer, yeah. An observation yeah. and sometimes as well it's like that's and that's really important I think that that point that you just made is really important you know when we speak of observation because when we're speaking from an observational perspective once again there is no charge there right for the individual observing it's just a huh how interesting mm -hmm. you know oh look at that what I've just observed how interesting but it's um it's curious if that observation is shared if the recipient feels charged by it. I find that interesting as well. But I, I find many things interesting, you know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Polly saying, I agree, an observation, well said, and everything is in relation to something. Yeah. I think she was referring back to the gauge thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, gauge. That's, that's, that's about the game. gauge. Yeah. And Linda saying, I feel judgment is a safety mechanism too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, I had, sorry, a, go on. if I had a lion charging at me, I'd have to judge. Do I run or do I turn my ground? I've got to make a decision. <laughs> what would you do, Shirley, if a lion came running at you? <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> well, that is a judgment that we have to make at certain times. Do I stand there? No doubt, which is is so wouldn't harm anyone. Other, it would just keep you safe. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, another mm. one here is to be afraid of judgment of others. Uh, sorry, to be unafraid of judgment of others is the greatest freedom that you can have. Oh yeah. 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 I think no how Ponopono would give you that. Mm. Because there's no identification with it. That's what that is. There's no external identification. Your identification is your harmony and your bliss and your peace within. You know, your energy is not being pulled. It's not pulled to yes. identify with what someone else is saying. You don't take that as a, uh, as a higher uh, level of truth than what is true within you, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yes. Um, Polly said, say I'm fat. If no one else exists, it doesn't have any bearing or meaning. Mm. She's referring back to the gauge, of, uh, the gauge and the measure again, hey? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's a fair point then that Polly is making. You know, there's a lot of body shaming, right? Uh, in various oh, kind of extremes, there's a lot of, a lot of body shaming. You know, you see it with the, with the men and do you look like this? Do you look like this? 
uh, and you see it with uh, with women all the time, you know, um, a lot of body shaming, right? And if there is a, uh, there's, there's, we have our own judgment on that, on what is a, a healthy or an appealing physique of someone else. But once again, that's a judgment. That's that's none of our business really as well, you know. Or we can make the observation, but, you know, depends the intention, doesn't it? It's interesting though, isn't it, being alive, because <laughs> some of things happen without us judging or expecting or preparing for. It just happens. So there's no judgment involved until whatever that event is passes. And then what do we do? Do we judge it? Not usually. We usually go over it in our minds or think about it or not think about it. Mm. So judgment doesn't come into that situation at all. Mm. I'm thinking about the time when I was in Brazil and I had ayahuasca for the first time and I didn't know I was going to be having ayahuasca. So I just went along with the whole scenario and what was going on there. But there was no judgment because I was just living it without judging or thinking or you know it should be this way or that way or whatever there was that must happen to a lot of people when things just happen and judgment doesn't come into it because they're simply living it whatever that situation is does that make sense to anybody oh absolutely you're just you're, you're just being yeah exactly yeah then that's oh, oh, is ayahuasca is that a drug it is. Was well, that a hallucinogenic? And you didn't know it was going. You were going to take it. I have had it twice in Brazil, both times. Yeah, it's it's a sacred plant medicine. Uh, yeah. It's an ancient ritual. The, the Indians came in and they spent a week preparing it um, beforehand. It, you know, it's got to be done properly, correctly, and the whole situation has got to be done correctly. It's not the most pleasant experience, I have to say, especially if you're not prepared for it. <laughs> Where are you? No, I wasn't prepared. I didn't know that's what was going to happen. Oh, it's oh a, I say. It, it's quite a long story. Uh, it, it was in a village in Brazil. And, uh, oh, the energies. I mean, you know, it would take a, well, it, I'll probably write about it in my book, in a book. You so. need to. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow so Beverly say no blame forget the shame be yourself be respectful and set boundaries mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. no blame forget the shame be yourself be respectful and set boundaries yeah why not <laughs> and then Polly's saying at the end of the day it's about the social normalization of what's expected by the collective well, I, I think we do, in, in to some extent, live by the boundaries that are set by by society. You know, to a certain degree, we all do. I think, mm -hmm. in order to get along, you know, we're not all kicking the over the traces all the time. I'm sure. <laughs> you know, if we go to the supermarket and buy stuff, we have to pay for it. You know, we don't walk out without paying. You know, they're the boundaries. Normal boundaries. I think we're almost at the end of this. So I think really what we're looking at, we're talking about judgment today. Um, the more you can see the best in other people, yeah. the better it is. So if you're looking for the best in others and not looking for judgment of others, yeah. um, I know that was a thing when we were, when the, boys were growing up you know well even with the dog training um you know if you uh, reward the good that they do that's mm -hmm. how you get the good from them yeah yeah you know so yeah with friends if you you know find the best in them or if you uh compliment people you know if there's something you particularly like you know, this lady I walked past in the street the other day had a really pretty top on. And I just said, she had a walking stick and she was obviously suffering a bit. I said, oh, what a beautiful top you've got on. And she said, oh, thank you. I mean, it's just a little thing like that, you know, just to 
or find some... the best in others as much as possible. My, I've got a little plaque that my grandmother gave me, and I've had it ever since, and none of the rest of the family wanted it. Uh, on this plaque, it says, seek out the good in every man and speak of all the best ye can. Mm -hmm. And I think that is lovely, yeah. yeah. It's really powerful practice when you can edify others, yeah. you know, when you can speak well of others, regardless if there's any contrast, any challenge that's occurring behind the scenes. Yeah. You know, if we speak out the good, we offer the benefit of the doubt, uh, and look for the good you know we're finding that within ourselves anyway in every moment that we that we do that it's a beautiful practice it is yeah I, I try to do that <laughs> when I see something that isn't so nice I feel compassion for that individual mm. because yes. that's, they're not having a good time of it on their journey they mm. must be unhappy to be the way they are mm. and I feel yeah. compassion them that's just the first thing that comes out is compassion what a beautiful what can you do yeah. what a beautiful sentiment to start this conversation on judgment and end it on compassion yeah absolutely you know yes absolutely um have you got anything coming up that you need would like to share shirley oh me um well apart from my 89th birthday which is coming up not really. I mean, I'm doing the normal things, you know, running groups and stuff like that. Nothing out of the ordinary. You're amazing. Wonderful. Up out of the blue, though, mind you. Yeah. Thank but, you for agreeing to this today, Shirley. Oh, it's been a pleasure. And to meet you, Alice, as well. Oh, thank you, Shirley. It's so wonderful to have met you as well. And to share this space with both of you. It's uh, And everyone in the comments, too, you know. Yeah, really absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you for your input. Um, and Alice, would you like to share anything you've got coming up? Oh, thank you. Um, on Wednesday night, online on Zoom, I have, I'm co-hosting a workshop called Atlantis and the Essenes. We're going to be discovering that golden thread that takes us from Atlantean times all the way through to the Essene movement and remembering that aspect of ourselves. So if that calls to you, I'll uh, if it's all right with you, Jackie, I'll put it in the Facebook comments. Is that a good way? To yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. And on the 11th of July, if anyone is near Bournemouth, I have the Bournemouth PLG group uh, kindly hosting, uh, hosting me where we're going to be talking about the art of going within. So the art of surrendering, the art of going within. Oh, so, perfect. Yeah, and I'll that was share inspired that by you and Adrian, that, Jackie, that was yes. inspired by when, when we, we were at lunch. lunch. Yes, yes, so uh, that's on uh, July 11th at 7pm uh, in Bournemouth, and I think the tickets are only £5.50, you know? Uh, I know, it's really affordable, incredible. So. If, if you buy in them in advance, they're five fifty, and if yes. you buy them at the door, they're only £7, but even so, yeah, five fifty. she's amazing to do that. Yeah. Okay, lovely. And tomorrow night, I've got uh, Dr. Sam Watts, the Ayurvedic doctor. He's absolutely incredible. His knowledge about our, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but Ayurvedic medicine um, is quite incredible. So yeah, I'm not sure if the title is, you know, it's how to, uh, how to stay young, how to stay young, is it? Um, the science and secrets of staying young. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but with our medic medicine so that's tomorrow night and that's on the website jackie-white.co.uk anyway thank you thank you both so much for today and um yeah i just say um polly has said it's compassion uh, comparison really this chair is pink that chair is oh i can't read that now <laughs> is a modder and both are valid judgments. It's not always negative. Oh no, when you're just talking about a chair, I don't think we've got a problem. But when it's, <laughs> you know, yes, I think we all get it. Thank you so much, everyone that's been watching today, and uh, really appreciate this talk. Lots of love. Much love. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Shirley Thank you. and Alice. Thank Bye. You.